only human radio. Oh, evening all. Well, I don't wish to sound down. Good lord, what a miserable evening it is. But at least it's episode five, Five Alive. Do you know what Five Alive used to be? It used to be that special drink, didn't it? Do you remember that special drink, Andy, that used to make me really hyper and over-energetic, a little bit like I am now? It had <laughs> Have orange, you had... lemon, grapefruit, tangerine, <laughs> lime in it. it, had everything in there. <laughs> Have you had a crate of it already? No, I've had a little bit of something else. But anyway, it's great Oh, you to always see have a little bit every... of something else. Ah, I'm just telling you a little bit though, Andy. Just a little bit, just to start the evening off, just to get us going. Oh, it is exciting though. Episode five on a dark, dingy evening. Andy, you look fantastic. You're always a ray of sunshine in any room that I walk into. It's my red hair. It's the light shining off my red hair and my red beard. Now, that could be it. That could be it. They're, they're, you've got that special glow that lives around you 12 months of the year. It's uh, it's extraordinary. It is extraordinary. I feel like we're in a bar. Extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> and we've just met. <laughs> Don't touch my hand. Uh, right. But anyway, we've got a special guest with us tonight as well. We have, uh, well, we have Rob Spall with us tonight. Good yes. evening, Rob. Evening, evening. I think I'll um, be heading off to go and get myself an umbongo, actually. Now you've started the Five Alive thing. Oh, they only drink that, <laughs> they only drink that in the Congo, Rob. Oh, yeah. You can't have that in uh, in Colin Bay, my friend. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm afraid that's a very special drink that can only be drunk in one place, and that's one place. Now, you can't see Rob. We can see Rob. So Andy's obviously sat inside his studio at home. I'm sat in my studio at home. But crikey, our studios are nothing compared to what uh, we can see with Rob there. Rob, could you just look around the room just very quickly and just describe in a basic terms the amount of equipment that you've got sat around you? <laughs> so behind my right shoulder, I've got a... Um my what's my live rig for performing solo stuff and the stuff I do with accretion entropy, which is a whole bunch of synths and modular stuff. Then behind me, I've got a, there's a three D printer and a few synths and things in boxes that are off for sale. If anybody wants any, so you just <laughs> skip past three D printer very very quickly then. <laughs> then. So what you've got a three D printer? Yeah, and was, we use it for. Well, I use it for prototyping stuff so um we've been designing a, a new sort of real-time performance midi sequencer so i've been printing the case and shells for that to give it some sort of structure so i can stick buttons in it and push it and see what happens and so that's put yeah. together on my sort of electronics desk which is just in front of the 3d printer all soldering irons and bits and bobs like that you see but, but that's because you're an intellectual normal sort of person who's very interested in music so i would actually try and make bionic ears or something <laughs> like that out of that if, <laughs> I, if I had that in my I'm not house saying i haven't made bionic ears <laughs> <laughs> But that is one of the most amazing studios I've ever seen. We're going to have to post a picture of that out so everybody else can actually see uh, yeah. what we're looking at tonight. So it is quite extraordinary. And we're, uh, well, Andy, we've got an amazing lineup tonight. Not only have we got Rob with us yeah. tonight, who is uh, a, a seasoned professional, but honestly, Andy, you've, you've picked some corkers tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're on for a start. Yeah, well, we, we, we'll bypass that as quickly as we possibly can. But we've got uh, we've got the uh, the. The Prince of Synthness on in a bit. Oh, oh, ah, yeah, we have. Yeah, Doctor, we've Doctor got, Boom. We've got a great tune from Rob. We're going to have a chat about that. Um, Rob's going to talk to us about one of his favourite bits of kit. Um, we've got Malleus again. Um, so, new feature. What's the new feature? Oh, oh, man alive, we have got a new feature. Shall we? Uh, yeah. Shall we play the? Shall we, shall we do an, no, we're not. No, actually, not. I'm not going to do an early jingle. They're going to have right. to wait for the jingle, Andy. But it yeah. is Andy's master blaster that comes a little bit later yeah. with another classic jingle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Another possibly BAFTA award-winning jingle that's going to come out of there. <laughs> we've got we've got Torsk. He's made us wait for this a little bit, um, but we've actually got something from Torsk at last. Um, better late than never, I say. Um, I've, we've yeah, re- love it. It's a great tune. We're pl- playing that. It is amazing. And then we've got we've got something from Johnny Diamond as well. Um, yeah, which is, one, which is uh, uh, it's a belter from Johnny Diamond too. Yeah, it's uh, it's been around a little while. I've I've heard it first heard it a couple of years ago on a Chester Music site had posted it. I was like, oh, this is great. This is great. Johnny is now part of the Omni Human community, so it, it was only a matter of time before we got a Johnny tune on. So we'll give that listen tonight as well. 
Absolutely. So that well, well, that's a fantastic lineup. And the best thing is, Andy, that um, you've got mine out of the way first. So we'll we'll get rid of mine quickly. We'll no, just no, get no. that off the horizon, and then because we like to start with something that's got a bit of pace, we like to end with something that's got a bit of pace. And yours has got a bit of pace. We can't see the speedboat, unfortunately, and the uh, and the sea <laughs> and all of that to create the mood. But the, the music will do just fine. <laughs> Well, let's give it a crack, and uh, hopefully everybody won't nod off whilst they're listening to it. So anyway, this this is sadly me. We'll come back in after this, and we'll not talk about this anymore straight after that. Thank you. 
Human radio. Well, there we go. Well, I wish I was on a speedboat doing that. Sadly, I was just sat on my front veranda with bad back doing it. But anyway, you know, it's a bit of fun. What, what, do, what did you thing, use yeah. on that? What was the bit of kit you used? Well, it's my Akai Force. I've had all sorts of bits of kit over the years. I've had a machine, I've had a, uh, a, a Moog Sub Fatty, I've had a Korg Minilog, I've had a Korg Monologue, I've had a uh, three electro all sorts of bits and pieces and I've, I've managed to get it down to one single piece of kit which is the Akai Force um, and it's probably not for everybody but for me it's absolutely perfect because it's just a one single piece of kit uh, that has got built-in synthesizers a really good sequencer a really good sampler um, you can manipulate all sorts of things with it. You can use it as a MIDI sequencer for something else. You can just do pretty much everything with it. There's um, some cracking housey chords in there Really like oh, those. Well, the, the arpeggiator that's built into this is amazing. That's probably one of the best things about it is the arpeggiator in there. It's just it's just fantastic. Um, so it, and the well the the built-in synths as well are just built for dance chords. It's just super, and it's cool. also got a fantastic chord sequence in there as well. Honestly, if anybody's even tempted to doing it, I would hundred percent recommend an Akai Force. It's just an amazing piece of machinery. Anyway, I wasn't really going to ramble on about that, but I have done anyway. So let's get past that very very quickly because we've got something extremely good coming up. Something far far better than that it is the prince of synth dr boom is in the room <laughs> yeah it's dave dave julian we've we've not played one of his tunes for crikey a couple of weeks now no must be a month uh, so you know you it? can't you yeah, can't well, yeah, it might be. yeah we can't you, know, you can't spend too much time without a bit of dave so tonight we've got we Milano Express or Milano Express, Milano <sighs> Express. I well, I actually love this. And I was just saying to Rob before, did you have a chance to listen to this? And you said yes, I did. So what, Rob, what did you think about this one? Um, when when it kicks off, I had some really immediate sort of um, Chris Low vibes, early Pet Shop Boys sounds in it, and then yeah, just really enjoyed the kind of um, that sort of the pop vibe. That it has, I really, really like that. I really like the sort of round yeah. sounds to it, the smoothness to it, um, the the classic kind of analog drum from that kind of eighties era. Just mm. really, it, it seems to be on a such a big revival at the moment, and those the sounds he gets out of it are really, really hit, hit the the you know the nail right on the head. It's it's exactly the right kind of sounds for the for the piece. When when we had Dave in about a month ago, he, the bit of kit he talked about was the Dave Smith Tempest, and uh, it's the Tempest he uses on this track. Mm. Um, in fact, he uses a Dramatics and a Tempest on this one, running at the same time. So I think that's... Uh, well, I mean, I, I know it's a bit of kit that he absolutely loves, and he's, uh, he masters it, so I think um, the, 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 the sounds he's getting out of that are... As you say, really fantastic and sound good. What do you think, uh, Jules? Well, it, it again, because of the name, because it's Milano Express, it's hard not to um, just have a think back to Trans Europa Express. So I had a little listen back to that this afternoon. And the, the, I, can, I, I don't know, I mean, Dave can speak for himself, but I think there might be a reason he's called it Milano Express, because to me there was a lot of synergy in there with... Um, with a bit of Flavian or Florian stuff in there, it was I don't know. I found a very craft worky feel to it in places, yeah, uh, which yeah. is a massive compliment to Dave. Um, but it was a, just a lovely flowing piece. I just really enjoyed it end to end. I've listened there's, to it before, but the, he, there's live keys on there as well, so it's not all sequence. So he's um, he's yeah. playing live keys. I think it's the Mofo. He's playing live keys on. Oh, is it? Yeah, um, but there's some lovely pitch bends in there, and stabs are really good as well. Should we listen? Should yeah, we mofo's a, a well, we should. That, that mofo is a great piece of kit. I had the Beautiful, little desktop version of that, but, um, which was amazing. Yeah, and it is a, a fantastic piece of kit. So yes, yeah, sorry, absolutely, Andy. We should have a listen to this. Let everybody else make up their minds. But I know you'll enjoy it. This is Day Julian. Uh, this is Milano Express. <laughs> Thank you. 
Julian, Milano Express. Well, I'd listened to it before many times, Andy, but crikey, I'd just forgotten how good that was. It's I've heard it, we've heard it live a few times, haven't we? He's played it at well, uh, Sheldon's Live, I think. He has, but I mean, oh, I don't know, he's, just everything he does is just superb. It really yeah. is. It's hard to, um, well, I wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to fault anything he does, because, you know, he is just, he's just great. He's a great guy, he's a nice fellow, he's fantastic. Anyway, yeah. we're moving on to something. Uh, and and again, it's hard to really put your finger on things sometimes, but I was saying to you before, Rob, this is one of the best pieces of music I think we've ever played on this show. Um, and it is 
quite an inspirational piece for me. When I listen to this, and I've listened to it about four times now, um, I was quite taken aback at how amazing this piece of music is. I'll stop, I'll stop stuttering on. Andy, you're better at this than I am. Well, I, th- I think we need to explain. We're about to, uh, in, a, in a bit, we're going to have a listen to Rob's Spark One tune. Um, it's going to give us a bit of background about the, the tune itself. Um, again, same as you, I've been listening to it. Um, I've got a bit of a long commute, and now I'm back at work. And um, I've spent a bit of time in the car listening to to Rob's tune, and it's <laughs> the two two things that really struck me. I mean, apart from the melod the, the melodic aspects of it and the and the structure, it was the it was the details that I absolutely loved. Um, the little modulations and the little flickering bits of melody that uh, that sometimes only happen once and don't come back and it was just those lovely details that i enjoyed the most um (laughs) rob yeah um what a great piece of what a great piece of music um can you tell us a little bit about it well thank you very much um so in during this lockdown period we me and uh, a couple of friends charlie and and ed decided that we'd start just putting out music because when I was, I don't know, I guess twenties, I um, I used to release quite a lot of music for free on the internet and write a lot of music for um, community bonus pack mods of games, that kind of thing, and build up quite a following on uh, an old site called Reason Station years ago on, on Propellhead's Reason app in the early days of that. And yeah. then I basically, you sort of have family and you stop doing stuff and they just kind of mm. didn't release anything for years and years and years. And then during this lockdown period, we sort of decided to release this EP and put together a whole lot of time. Well, I put together a ton of time on a one specific piece that kind of compiled bits and bobs together and then released it as this big kind of epic thing. And I enjoyed releasing that so much and actually having something out there that I just leapt straight onto the next piece, which was this one, which is Spark One. So it, it really comes off the back of sort of I, I mean, almost like a newfound confidence in being able to just put stuff out again and, and, and not worrying that someone's going to go, oh, it's this or it's that, or bothering about where anybody's interested in, in downloading it or listening to it. And so I'd had this this idea of uh, I was messing around with some Max for Live arpeggiators and bits and bobs, and, and the idea of trying to put in some polyrhythmic sequences, so different bits of... Um, essentially, the, the main core of it is three lines of midi that are um all polyrhythmic so they're all the none of them fit in a standard four four kind of pattern they all loop mm. round at different periods some are one sixteenth longer than the others and so so they're all sort of dancing all over the place but they're all playing into a monosynth so sometimes when more than one triggers at the same time the monosynth can only play one note so it cancels some of them out and so so you end up with this perpetually evolving melody that never plays the same thing twice and then i think that's what i was alluding to in the when i was just introducing it i noticed that there was something that might i would might only hear once i might hear a um a variation of it a little bit later on an echo of it but uh so what you'll be that's uh, yeah what you'll be hearing essentially is is one each of the melodies the three different parts repeat. They all repeat. Well, the initial foundation of the song is that they, they would all just keep repeating all the way through it. And so you'll hear a recurring theme from each of them at different points, but they're all interspersed differently, so you won't necessarily yeah. hear it exactly the same way twice. But you'll hear little bits of it, a couple of little close notes that fall or rise or whatever. And then out yeah. of that, I sort of found a little phrase in it that I really liked, that um, I just sort of decided right that's that's the the way i kind of imagine in this piece is like a spark a little spark dancing across the floor and it's sort of setting lots of little things alight and some of them fizzle out and eventually everything starts catching a light and becomes one great yeah. big unified fire essentially and so the piece yeah, is yeah. built on that that these little sporadic things like this little bell theme that comes in that's also not in any um fixed time with with other things and then the sort of stab phrases that jump in and out but by the end of it they've all come together in a, a reasonably predictable kind of 4-4 four, four pattern with the melody mm. that came out of this initial kind of polyrhythmic thing being the main 
theme that, that anchors it all together. That, that's one of the things I love about it as well, because, I mean, it's it's quite a complex, um, structurally quite complex, or the idea is, is quite complex. Um, but it, towards the end, like you say, it, it locks down, mm. and you can actually imagine this on a dance floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that fair, do you think? Yeah. So a lot of my earlier stuff was very electronic dance focused stuff my early years of doing this kind of thing my teens was um sort of a a couple of mates who used to make kind of rave music in the basement and a bit of hip-hop and that kind of stuff so always very electro stuff my my influences have been one of my biggest influences is bt um and bt's always done this kind of core of dance music but then wandered off into exploratory territories with super collider yeah, and yeah. modular stuff and experimental processes and stuff like that so so th- this track is a, a little bit in that kind of vein in that it takes the kind of abstract stuff but still yeah. makes it accessible and makes it a piece of dance music by yeah. the end of it so yeah, yeah you yeah. could i could quite easily see people bouncing up and down to this i would love to see people bouncing yeah. up and down to it yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah Absolutely. that's i mean that's, I, I, yeah. I think at about at Go about on, one minute fifty, sorry, I was going to say about one minute fifty. There's a there's, there's a stutter that comes in, which I, I noticed. What was that? And I had to rewind it a little bit, listen to it again. Oh yeah, there's a little stutter that comes in. It was like a really subtle little stutter. And I thought well, that's a really subtle little thing to pop in there. And then at about three minutes, you kind of flood it with it, and it and it pops out, and then it's all about the song is the stutter almost really. And it kind of reminded me a little bit. I know I, know, I keep doing this, Andy. I know I keep shouldn't keep you doing got this. It. But, but it keeps reminding me. It reminded me a little bit of like a, the Portishead classic drum stutter that they do. You know the, yeah. you know the the really classic Portishead drum stutter that they put in there. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of that about that inside there. Well, a lot of the kind of a lot of the inspirations from kind of the, the my interest in BT has come from his kind of exploration of micro rhythms and stutters. And and this track has um, a, f- a fair bit of his stutter edit plugin throughout it but not really right. used in the stutter edit is often used as a kind of master on the, on the main mix bus to just destroy everything and it often gets used for vocals but yeah. what i found it really useful for in this is just every now and again destroying a little bit something somewhere a little bit of a melodic theme just sort of uh starts to stutter or repeat or or dis, sort of deconstruct itself a bit and then a little bit of that on the drums here and there so not overly using it, using it lots of subtle bits all the way through, which creates all these kind of lots of details. And then on top of that, there are lots of kind of micro edits manually done and and bits like that, and sort of really in the detail of it. But yeah, that's that's something that's always fascinating again, me with, with BT's work is the the he's, he said at one point um, you can actually slow down his tracks and find new rhythms within them. The detail, you know, the the right. sort of rhythmic editing is that kind yeah. of detailed. It's almost like one of those pictures that you uh, was looking on the internet yesterday, where it's like and it zooms in, and then it's got another picture within it, and another picture yeah. within it, and another picture within it, and you just keep yeah. on going and like going and going. A rhetoric yeah, world. The more you kind of listen to the detail. Of, yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and it, and again, the uh, I'm sure you'd agree, Andy. The, the production values on this, Rob, were amazing. I mean, utterly amazing. This sounded like a properly, fully mastered track. I, I, track I wrote, was, when I was making notes, I put detailed and beautifully produced. Yeah. Were the was two of the notes I put? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm, so, did, was this all produced and, and, and mastered yourself? Or? Yeah, yeah. This is all um, done in house. I was listening to it in the car the other day, going, "Oh, that EQ is too harsh. I don't like it." <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a bit, a bit hard on yourself there. Compressed that. I that think pushed so, yeah. a bit too far. Blah blah I think blah. blah. So. You're perpetually doing that. But but one one thing this this whole sort of lockdown <laughs> thing has has helped me do is go, whatever. Just get it out there. Then, then someone can enjoy it. If 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 you don't get it out there because you're faffing over whether you've pushed the, you know, you've got the right setting on the limiter or the compressor should be slightly dialed down or whatever, you know, just sort of go. It's good enough. Get it out there, you know, and and yeah. and move on to the next one. Make some more music, you know. Uh, I tell you what, Rob, if that's your good enough, that's <laughs> my uh, that's my Everest. To be honest with you, <laughs> I, think I'll, I think I'll take your good enough any day of the week. <laughs> Should we? I tell you what, Andy. Should we have a listen? Yeah, let's let's bang it on. Come on, let's bang it straight on there. This is uh, this is Rob Spall. This is Spark One. See you straight after this.
Ah, Rob. That was nothing short of astonishing. Uh, I'm sure everybody I don't, everybody else is probably just flat back on their settees right now, going, good Lord, what have I just listened to? That was astonishing, wasn't it, Andy? Yep, absolutely, 100%. Big fan, converted, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Love it. There's only one thing, possibly, that could top that, uh, and it's difficult to do sometimes, but it is the jingle that is now, we're on our fifth episode, Andy, and we are on our, I think, tenth week, maybe even... F- 13th week it is the jingle that's now been voted uh, worldwide uh, the top jingle by who? Um, that's ever been produced <laughs> uh, by BAFTA um, it's possibly nominated Baff- for uh, an Oscar now as well <laughs> baffled that's, that's a far more accurate way of putting it here's the jingle Andy's Gear Geek Corner what does that not do? oh and what a jingle it is it, it is it's Andy's Gear Geek Corner and this week with our special guest star Rob Spall yeah yeah um so gear geek um so i'm going to attempt to uh pretend to you know i'm going to attempt to sound know what i'm talking about uh but rob's going to be talking about the uh, yamaha reface cs mm-hmm. um yeah. so the question i've learned to ask first is rob what is the yamaha reface cs <laughs> so the Reface CS is Yamaha's reinterpretation of their Yamaha CS80, which was released in 1977 and was absolutely enormous, a massive, great polysynth. And um, was heard on... I mean, a lot of the earlier artists I was inspired by, sort of Van Gallis, Jar, that kind of thing, all of those artists. Um, it's the Blade Runner soundtrack, it's, uh, it's Chariots of Fire, it's... Um, plenty of Doctor Who stuff done with it. The the is it, big sounds of those kind of things. Isn't it? Isn't? Am I right in thinking that a good quality original yep. is bankbustingly expensive? Yeah, thousands and thousands of pounds. And the, right. I don't know that there are a huge number of them left that are still f- functioning because they they were such an expensive synth in the first place. It was about five thousand UK pounds when it was released think so it was an absolute fortune when it was released um wow. in the you know 70s early 80s um but it, it had such a vast array of you know stuff that nothing else had at the time um uh after touch things like that ribbon controllers or all, all you know no one had ever used anything quite like it before it was a really quite incredible and it, i mean it's such an enormous it's like a blooming starship dashboard thing it yeah. was a huge device um, I've never actually seen one in real life. No, I've, seen, I've seen pictures of them. Yeah. They look enormous. Yeah, you get a sense of scale even from a JPEG. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, because you can't see the back of it. <laughs> but uh, the what's his name? The look, mum, no computer guy. Um, I forgot his name, but he he did a, a YouTube video fairly recently where he'd managed to get access to one, and uh, yeah, it's it's twice the size of it. <laughs> Right. So yeah. Anyway, having loved the sounds of that device, Yamaha then released the the reef. Well, they had a whole there's a whole series of reface stuff. There's a the CS, which is which is this one. There's a, a DX, which is a, a sort of reimagining of the the DX7. There's a um, CP, which is a electric piano, and then there's a I think it's a YC, which is the organ, and they're all far better than they should be. They they look like little toy keyboards, but they sound incredible. They sound the electric piano one particularly is is really. Is really it good. is it the similar market to the Roland boutique stuff? It kind of is, but it, but they're they're the same sort of scale as that, um, but they're just sort of wider keyboard factors. So they're a bit more playable. They have a few more keys right. than the kind of Roland boutique style stuff. Okay, but um, yeah, but the core, the insides of them are just—they're really, really good. Um, I mean, they go—they come with a couple of the little speakers on the left and right, so you can hear what you're doing as you yeah. as you're doing it. But um, uh, it, it didn't quite fit in my box, so I ended up sawing the speakers off the side of mine and, and <laughs> fetching it in. It still works fine; it just can't. I haven't got any speakers anymore. Um, so yeah, so so the reason it's it's been such a good tool for me is it, it sounds like the cs80 it sounds like if i want those vangelis kind kind of super soy sounding pads you know you can grab those and 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 it's got such a, a 
a limited number of controls, but you can do such a lot with them. There's no presets. Everything is like you grab it, you you design your sound on the fly, and and you go with it. You know, whatever you you know, whatever you just tweak it and and makes the noises. So Rob, uh, you mentioned that there's no presets. It, so y- y- there's no chance of saving anything. So if you get a sweet sound that you like, then that's it. Can yeah. you can you save that anywhere nope. or or not? You can't. You en- no. you enjoy the sound and then you make a different one. <laughs> and okay. that, I think is so, the reason. So when you, when you when you turn the thing on, yeah, what do you get? Is it a square, a, a simple wave, you or get, you build from the ground up? Or? You get whatever you wherever you left it. So whatever the sliders are set at when you turn it off is what it is when you when it comes back on again. So it's very much right. like a, I mean it's it's supposed to be a, a virtual analog, um, and it behaves like a virtual analog in that you move a slider, it moves. You know, there's no kind of catch up stuff with you know encoders or any of that stuff. No presets, no nothing. Whatever the slider is, is what the sound is. So if you want to play live with that, sorry, Andy, this is your interview, not mine, but I just can't help ask you. But if you want to play live with that, then uh, and Obviously, it's going to be different every single time. How do you get that to get back to the sound that you wanted to play a live piece? The reason this synth has stayed in my rig is because I think it's been the single most important guiding principle in in the way I've developed my live stuff. Because my live stuff is, for me, is I'm not really interested in trying to perform Spark One. I, my live stuff is what can I create on the fly there and then that's never been heard before. And so everything that's left my rig has basically been stuff that has been too menu divey or too frustrating to get something done. I'm not interested in saving stuff. I'm interested in making it there and then. So when you want to, when you sort of, the, the performance kind of stuff I do is sort of think, oh, I want a pad. What sort of pad do I want? Right, I want a saw wave pad or I want a square wave pad. So I know where that is on the, on the reface. And I can get it within seconds because you basically have, um, a, a type of oscillator selection. So you've got five different types of oscillator. So there's a uh, saw, square pulse, uh, an FM1, a sine wave one with noise, and I've forgotten what the other one is, but uh, they that's all you've got. So you've got those five, and then next to that you've got a couple of oscillator m- sort of modulators, essentially. And so those do different things depending on which oscillator you've got selected. So, for example, with the saw wave your one of the sliders dials in a unison spread so you get the big super saw sound the other slider dials in a sub oscillator so that lets you go from a very thin sounding square sorry very thin sounding saw wave into a, a, a completely different sounding super saw with a big sub oscillator sounding thing within no time at all because you just push those faders up and you're there you're done or you push them somewhere in between and, and balance the sound but then on the for example the like the fm one it starts to modulate the two oscillators together and you you get the most crazy filthy sounds out of it because it, it just doesn't behave in the same way that the the saw wave one does so you're, you're perpetually finding new and weird and wonderful sounds i mean it, it has sort of doesn't have the sort of super high resolution in the faders and it kind of jumps between values but then that's kind of part of what i like about it in that it has a slightly kind of um digital quality to an analog emulation and so it can it it has it has a, a character that has just really really resonated with me and i've just found consistently i can get the sound i want out of it really fast and i have no desire to save it I just want to do it again. Hmm. It it sounds to me as if you've um, learnt this instrument in in a way that somebody might learn to play a clarinet or a saxophone or a, or a trombone. It's sort of that kind of pro. Hmm. It sounds like it's that kind of process. Yeah. Um, you're saying that you know exactly where to go, but it sounds to me like you're a guy who's actually learnt to play this instrument. Do you think that's the fair? Yeah, I th- assessment. I think that's that's kind of why it works for me live. Because I mean, I've been building synth patches since I was, I don't know, twelve, fourteen on sort of early Roland D tens, Korg M ones that my you know my dad would buy them and I'd sort of figure out how they worked. So I understood fairly early on sort of oscillators, filters, envelopes, all that kind of stuff. And so I can I can tear apart a big complex you know synth and put it back together and design sounds on it. But it doesn't excite me anymore that 
it, it's mm. that's like a laborious process. What I like is is like you're saying the ability to not just not just play the keys but play the whole instrument. So mm. so the sliders are part of the performance and they are really part of the performance on the CS because they're they're all such mm. short sliders and they're all so close. You can you can end up in a situation where I've I've got one hand on one keyboard, another hand on the um, the reface, and I can reach my thumb across and just push the release uh, section of the envelope right to the top, and then leave it, and it'll just sit there. And then I can go and do mm. something else, and then I can come back to it and bring the release down and move the note. So it's it's super compact, super powerful, mm. flexible, and so so fast to use. And and it sounds how, how unpredictable is it? How unpredictable would you say it was? Is, does does it ever absolutely f- throw you off your off your train of thought or or not is it something that can just chuck something at you that you go oh what the hell is that what's going on there are a couple of oscillators on it that can do that because they can get so wildly different from from like the the sine wave oscillator where you start is basically a, a sine wave so it makes for you know really nice sub bases stuff like that you start to push the faders up one of the faders is, a, is essentially a noise fader but the other one is a kind of modulation fade, fade fader against it so you really quickly end up with completely unpredictable, wild, modulated noises, and then you can mm. sort of start the, the the filter. The resonance on the filter is is exceptionally brutal when you push it really high, and then on the very end of it, you've got a little effects chain or a little effects unit essentially with the kind of chorus, phaser, delay, um, and there's, but there's also a distortion, and the distortion is also absolutely brutal. So, mm-hmm. so when you start, you, you can set up these really beautiful big Vangelis kind of pads, and then if you run that into sort of a shimmer verb or a, some big reverb, it sounds spectacular. I've just just picked up one of those Korg NTS ones for the basically for the effects on it, and so running yeah. the reface through that is is absolutely lush. But then you you switch over to one of the other oscillators, push up some resonance, and wind up the distortion at the other end, and then you have to turn the volume down because. <laughs> It's absolute brutal wall of digital noise, and I don't have another device that I can do that on. You know, of all of the bits of kit that are in my rack, I mean, there's, all the modular thing is great fun. I love it to bits, but it takes mm-hmm. time. So you end, end up with this kind of process of looking at the modular and for a live performance and, and building something on that that's going to slowly evolve and tick away, and then I can do a bit on the reface and and then go and do something else a bit, and I can always at any point get straight to the reface and do a thing on it. Yeah, you know, and I know what it will sound like really quickly. Wow. So, I mean, if 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 I wanted to get my hands on one, are, are they still available? Yeah. Is it still a production it's, model? They're still, they're still, still in production, and they're available pretty cheap. There, I think you pick them up for a couple of hundred quid, which is wow, an really? absolute bargain at a synth. For. <laughs> t- t- I'm going to confess, um, going slightly off road. Um, I think this is the first time I've done Gear Geek Corner. I actually want to go and buy one of these things. So uh, <laughs> you'll probably see me trying to scratch my head, staring at, 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 at one of these refaces in yeah. the next couple of weeks. It sounds absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. It sounds brilliant. We've got a whole pile of gear under the under the desk for sale now. That's just you know, there's like there's a base station two, and there's the I've switched out. I've got a, a Yamaha, uh, sorry, a Roland System one, which I also love to bits, and I've switched that mm. out with the modular version of it, which is great fun. And then there's other sort of IK Uno synths, all all these other synths that I've tried, and they've all gone in the box, and they've all gone. You know, the, the, I mean, the base mm. station two is such a highly regarded analog synth. It sounds good. But I just can't play it like I can play a reface. So it's useless mm. to me for live stuff. I mean, if I was using it in a studio, maybe I'd have a purpose for it. But for the live stuff, it just isn't fast enough for me. Wow. Yeah. It's it's it sounds like a really intrig- it, It's and it's passed me by as well. I I've when when you I, I did have to um, I did have to have a quick look at this piece of equipment when you said that this is what you're going to be talking about because it's not uh, it's not something that uh, as is on my radar is is there how popular is it is it is it quite an absurdly obscure piece of kit or is it quite popular i think it's it's one of those ones that's sort of fallen in between the really cheap super accessible stuff and the it's a bit too expensive to be a, a sort of toy but it's not yeah. quite expensive enough to kind of command that much respect almost. So it sits in a kind right. of 
you know, there's going to be plenty of purists mm. that'll go, oh, it doesn't sound like a CS80. But you, you bury yeah. it in the mix with some reverb, and it sounds like that kind of synth. You know, you can get those kind of sounds I'd out. never come across one of these before. I, Me too. When I Me looked too. it up, it, it's something I'd never heard of. Mm. And then I looked at it, and I looked at some, some tunes people have made on it and, it, and it's phenomenal. Yeah, there's lots of really nice bits on YouTube of people playing with a couple of them um, and creating loops. I think there's somebody with Sonic State did one a little while ago where they had three yeah. three reface devices. Cause it, it has a looper, and the looper is the one thing on it that is garbage. The looper is terrible. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Everything else on it is fantastic. The keyboard is even really good. It's, it's small keys, but it's really playable. Is it similar sort of size keys to... Um, a, a a micro Korg, is it that kind of Yeah, it's that kind size. of Yamaha home keyboard PSR style little tiny right. keyboard. But I mean they're not the tiniest size, but they're very fast. So I because I'm I, I there was a point where I just like giant keyboards and now I just like really small <laughs> keyboards that yeah. are real so as many as I could possibly get in this <laughs> oversized flight case as possible now, you know. So I'm yeah. perpetually looking for the next little tiny bundle of noise making stuff but yeah the, the reface despite me slicing its ears off has is, is stayed for, for the whole ever since I started playing uh, with the sort of live stuff with uh, accretion entropy and um, that just yeah it just it was at the first gig I did with, with Charlie and Ed and it's the oh, I think it's the only piece of kit that I still have that's that's part of that Without the ends. Without, Without the, the ends, yeah, most of it's still there. <laughs> Why did you? Oh, was that just to fit it in the yeah, box? Yeah, fit it in the box. It's too big. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> a tiny keyboard, right. but it's still That's too big. That's the only reason you haven't sold that, is because nobody will bloody buy it now, because it's got the ends well, chopped off. Yes. As, as a dear friend says to me, you get a piece of kit, and you put a drill through it, then you don't need to worry about it anymore, because you know no one's going to buy it. <laughs> That's That's brilliant. That, I, I feel converted already. I, I think I'm going to be sniffing around for one of those, to be honest. They're, they're, honestly, they are, you wouldn't be disappointed. That one and the piano particularly, the CP. I've been very tempted with the piano before, but um, not quite got there yet. Well, I've got to say, Andy, uh, as Bruce Forsyth would say, uh, you're my favourite. That's uh, That was <laughs> one of the... <laughs> <laughs> I needed it in the voice then. You're my favourite. Um, but yeah, that was one of the best gear geek corners I've ever heard. It was fantastic. Yeah, I think Thank so. You very yeah, much, it's brilliant. Superb. That was really good. Superb. Really interesting. Absolutely. And particularly about a piece of gear that not many of us have heard about. So You uh, don't work yeah, for Yamaha, do you, that. Rob? <laughs> no, but if they want to send me all of the other <laughs> refaces, I won't say no. <laughs> Yeah, you'll have a couple in the morning, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was superb. Thank you very much indeed, Rob. Uh, let's play the jingle once more because it is a fantastic jingle. Andy's Gear Geek Corner. What does that knob do? Oh. Okay, so, and we're into a tune now. So, uh, oh, oh, well, we've got Malleus now coming up. I won't, I won't try and repronounce it four times like I did last time, Andy. It's actually just Malleus, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Christopher Kay. Um, he's... Uh, he, he, he put it out there last week, I think. So I jumped on it and got it for the show. So this is this is pretty new from Christopher. Um, I think I think it's uh, a, a tune, a dedication to um, one of his family. Um, that's who I think uh, Ted is. But uh, it's a it's a, it's a, I think it's a, a sort of a thank you for uh, getting me interested in music. Um, a thank you for you know um, giving me the opportunity to get involved in music. So yeah, well, Have you, did you get a chance, chance to listen to it, Rob? Yeah, I did. I, I enjoyed this one. It's um, a track after my own heart with that kind of early Vangelis uh, qualities and that CS Yamaha sound, those big saw pads, that kind of thing. Yeah, it works for me. I like it. It's because uh, we, we played a tune a couple of weeks ago, um, David Hughes, and um, you know. It's it, it it's it's coming from a similar area, isn't it, Jules? It's sort of like lovely swooping chord changes, arpeggios, um, you know, that kind of thing. And and, and some of the, some of the sounds, like you say, are very kind of Vagelis, late seventies, early eighties kind of sounds. 
Well, it is, and again, I mean, I, 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 I don't know about how you listen to tunes, but when I listen to tunes, I kind of go into like a visual experience of the whole thing and, and see something. Um, and with this, I was seeing just a beautiful blue sky, and there were little dots of rain on my cheeks, and I was looking into the sky thinking, where's that coming from? I don't know where that rain's coming from. Everything's so beautiful. But something is darkening this a little bit, and that was the melancholy that came into, into it for me, which was really quite touching and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 it starts off really beautifully with the... Um, the, the I, I, when I was making some notes, I put, I love the opening sequence. I love the sound, I, I love the melody, and it just sort of draws you in. Absolutely. Why don't we have a listen? This yeah. is Malleus. This is Release Ted's Reunion. <laughs> Radio. Malleus, release, Ted's reunion. What an utterly beautiful song that was. It's lovely. Yeah, it's really nice. Fresh as yeah. well. Fresh off the press. Yeah. It's nice to play well, something yeah. that is only, it's only been out there a week or so, so there we go. Yeah, you, you really, heard it here really first. utterly beautiful. Or second. Beautiful piece of music. Well chosen, Andy, and uh, beautifully played, Malleus. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, now it's time. We- oh, wow, this is very exciting, Andy. We've got a new jingle. Can you believe that? I can. No, no, I can't. 
<laughs> you shouldn't be able to. You won't be able to believe it when you hear it. The professionalism around this. It's almost like we should just be producing jingles. Here we go. I'm going to play it now. And there's Master Blaster. Time for tea. Mum, I'm doing a jingle. Now, if you can't tell me that's not better than the previous jingles we've done before, I, well, I don't know what's going on. It's peaking, And he's Master it? Blaster. <laughs> it's here. It's here. <laughs> the new feature, Andy's Master Blaster. Yeah. Well, uh, is, yeah. I, I don't even know what it is. But, um, but it's I think what we're going <laughs> to... I think I think what I think what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be featuring um, a piece of music that is outside of our community. Ooh. So it's going to be a piece of music that has been produced by someone we don't well, know. How would you describe yeah, somebody it? We don't know. Someone somebody, we've not uh, met. Yeah, it's not mainstream. It's somebody who's perhaps known, um, but uh, somebody we've not met outside our community. Someone with more than three fans. Bit. Yeah, more than three fans, a little bit left to centre, is pretty yeah. well known, and and, yeah. and this week's is pretty well known, really, and it's the first one, it's one I, I've chosen this week, Andy, I put my hand in the air uh, uh, to pick this one, and this is, this is Silver Columns, um, who I saw in Green Man, cracky, I should have written the year down, I can't remember what it was. I think it was about, I don't know, eight years ago, I'd say. Um, and Green Man's a great festival um, down in South Wales. And every time I've been, it's absolutely been torrential rain, appalling weather every single time, without question. That's the um, music they and play. This one, well, it, well, it does in to a degree, but this one was particularly bad. And I was particularly miserable, particularly wet. The children were young. And I just had enough, to be quite honest with you. And when I stood on my own at this small stage and thought, I'll just watch this on my own and have a few pints and just forget about everything in the rain. And it was Silver Columns <laughs> and it was a revelation and it changed the way I thought about music in a lot of ways because um, it was it was just phenomenal. And I listened to electronic music and singing, which I hadn't really... Uh, understood in a different way before and I don't know whether it was just because of the, the lightning and the, the storms and the mud or the scenario or what it was but it was just utterly beautiful and I went up and had a chat with them afterwards and just said look you know there's been some big stars on this weekend but you out of everybody are the people that have inspired me to actually try and do something um, so I, I, I had a chat with, with Johnny Lynch, Johnny Pictish as he's known now um, who was the, the guy who does moon, the most electronic stuff out of it. So they're now called Pictish Trail. And it's, it's two guys. It's, it's Johnny Lynch and Adam Ilhan. Uh, I think I pronounced his surname right. I hope I have. And they were a, a combination who did Silver Columns. And then Pictish Trail came after that. And then they've got a new um, album out at the moment, which is called Future Echoes, where the two have come back together again to do something together again, which again is superb. But it was this this Silver Columns album, which is called Yes Dance. So if you haven't heard it, it's called Yes Dance, Silver Columns. And this particular song was the one that really, really inspired me. And it's called Columns. And when I listened to it, I thought, if I can produce anything that's even close to listening something like that I would be absolutely amazed with myself and, I, and that's what I went to speak to Johnny about afterwards and said look you know you've really genuinely inspired me to, to go and make I've never made music in my life always love music I'm going to go and try and do something based on what I've seen tonight I'm drunk I don't care it's raining but I'm going to go and do it and that's what made me think well do you know what I want to make music that was a long that was a long monologue do, do you know um didn't you get in touch with them again recently? Um, they sent you quite a nice email. Well, one of them sent you quite a nice email, didn't they? Because well, we, we were trying to get them on here. Yeah. Well, it was Johnny Lynch, yeah. Um, so I sent them an email saying, look, I, I saw you at Green Man. You inspired me. And it would be lovely to interview you and actually talk about the, the way that you produce music and the rest of it. And unfortunately, he said, well... You're welcome to play my song. Sadly, I, I, you know, with the current situation on the rest of it, I'm running a record label. I've got children running around the house, and uh, finding the time to do an interview is not going to be that easy. However, it was a delightful. That's what R- Rob email mentioned that through. earlier. You know that uh, you, you you start you start a family and you um, the time goes you, out the window. <laughs> you know, other things take over, don't they, yeah, Rob? They do. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but now they're all just on iPads, so it's fine. I can get on with making noises. <laughs> yes it's the first master blaster so thank you very much for letting me do the first one andy um i hope everybody enjoys it this is silver columns with columns columns surround me and enclose me i see them rise into enormous open 
Radio. That was Silver Columns with Columns from the album Yes Dance. I hope you enjoyed that. I love that song. Andy was just saying he's listened to that a good few times as well. It, it is just a, I don't know, lovely, fantastic. Right, well, we're moving on. It's time for Torsk. And it's Torsk. 
I know, tour. I was playing with his phone. You're playing with your phone. You're supposed to be concentrating on I was, tex- on the I was texting my daughter to see if she could bring me another beer. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, that's fine. That, that, that's important stuff. I'll let you off that one. Torsk is uh, one of those guys that delivers every single time for me. Um, he's played Sheldon's. He's played Story House on an Only Human night. Um, he has. I actually watched the Story House uh, gig on YouTube earlier on because um, I, I, I couldn't get there that night. And it was because it, it was about, I don't know, 20 minutes long that he did that and it was no amazing. it's 40 minutes it's 40 minutes oh, was it 40 and, minutes yeah it was um, it, like was Rob it? it was it was completely improvised um, it's an unbelievably uh, <laughs> the, the set is just incredible I mean I, I, I think that it might be one of the the, the best improvised things I've, I've, I've heard in, well in recent years and it's it's all modular you can dance to it it's got texture it's got melody it's it's just a wonderful thing well i mean that's the thing that surprised me slightly is that you you can listen to that and you honestly wouldn't know that was all modular because usually you can kind of tell when it's all all modular Mm. because but this has got a traditional force the floor beat in there sometimes as well particularly the stuff i was listening to the story house thing had um, and it, 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 you know, it sounded like proper traditional. I say proper, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah. It sounded like traditional dance music. Um, well, when he tur- when he turned up, he goes, "Where's the dance floor?" And I was like, <laughs> "There isn't one." Was, and I think he was expecting people to sort of um, be getting on down. And when he started playing, there's absolutely no reason why he wouldn't think that because it's it's very very yeah. danceable. Well, if you haven't watched that Story House set on YouTube, it's it's up there, and it is well worth watching. It is, really is uh, an amazing... And you're right, Andy, it was 40 minutes. I just looked it up again now. Yeah, uh, yeah. It is, he, but I tell you what, it doesn't feel like it. It feels like 20 minutes. It's just on, on that night, On that night, I, uh, I, I, I was trying my best to, to be an organised person, and I'd got a, a, ti- a, a, a timings list of when everyone was on. So I went over to see him, and I said, "Look, I oh, you're going to say a tie in a shirt, then?" No, no, no. I was sort of like had the schedule because I thought you ah. needed a schedule, and uh, I went over to him, and he was looking at his <laughs> iPad, and I said, "Oh, are you all right to start in about ten minutes?" He goes, "I've started." I was like, <laughs> "All right, okay." <laughs> I'll see. My, my son's got a brilliant bit of video of me going. Oh, all right then. Bye. Get off the stage. You've started. Yeah. What are you Get doing? Lost. So, but uh, yeah, because it was a very gentle start. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a great piece of work. It's ace. Well, is that on the YouTube bit as well? Yeah, probably me going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's well worth watching anyway. Well, I tell you what, let's have a listen to it. This is uh, this is Torsk. This is get them.
Human Radio. Torsk, amazing as ever uh, with that modular gear. Then, as, as we were saying before, if you haven't watched that YouTube piece, do please watch that. The Storyhouse gig. When's next Storyhouse going to come up? Do you think, Andy? Oh crikey, that's a big one. I don't know. I really mm. don't know. Um, we had two scheduled for this year uh, because of the lockdown. We lost both of them. Um, we are very still very friendly with them. Um, so hopefully we'll be get we'll be get back in there. I don't know. Uh, is amazing. the answer. Be I mean, th- there've been we've had, we've had three phenomenal nights there, and that is good enough for me as it stands, you know. But uh, hopefully, when things die down, things calm down, we get a bit more of information from our leaders, the high ups. Then we can uh, start making plans for doing some more fantastic stuff there. Who knows? Don't Let's I. look forward to 2024 then. Yeah, yeah. so uh, <laughs> <it'll>, uh, <laughs> let's see what comes from high above. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it's amazing from Torsk, as yeah. always there. so And we've got another, uh, we've got a really nice song to end the night off, actually. So we've got um, we've got Johnny Diamond, and it's a little bit of a departure from Johnny, isn't it? Yeah, well, John, Johnny does do, he's... Uh, he does. He does quite a few vocal tracks, and he does quite a few guitar tracks. Um, but there's always a synth element in them. Um, but this one, um, "Profit for a Day," it's it's probably his most synthy piece of music um, that is that is put out there. Um, I heard it a couple of years ago. He, he, he's posted it on a couple of sites over in Chester, um, sort of Chester musician sites and what have you. And I heard it, and the minute it starts, it's like, oh, the, it, it's really, really something that I like to to listen to. Um, I did give it get a gear list off him, and looking at, at the stuff that he's used on there, I think the reason I love it so much is the R, a Yamaha RX5, which is right. um, a drum machine of yore. You used to have one um, of those. The, Sorry, Rob. You used to have one of those when I was a kid. My Did you? One, yeah. Wow. You, you, you've had pretty much every bit of kit anyway, Rob. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> you didn't mention anything, yeah. you've had it. <laughs> You're like Rob Dixon. Yeah. <laughs> except, no. except mine's spread over about 30 years. I think it's about six months. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, the the Yamaha R- RX five. I mean, it's it's that sort of a very very uh, uh, recognisable uh, hand claps, cowbells, you know. Um, but um, he's, he's, he's I, lo- I absolutely love this tune. I'm a big New Order fan. We're not supposed to say things sound like something, but this sounds um, a lot like something from um, New Order's Power Corruption and Lies. I'm sure Johnny won't mind me making the the comparison. I'm sure I'd be delighted with that. I, when I first time listened to that, I did a little bit of robot dancing, and it's good job this is radio, not TV, because it was my robot dancing was bad in the day, but crying out loud with my bad hip and back now, it was just ridiculous. Uh, it looked uh, more like a Meccano. I don't know what. I really know. I don't know what I'm rambling on about, Andy. Should we have a listen to the song? Probably yeah, the let's thing, do it. it. Let's do it. Let's Johnny Diamond. What's the song called, Andy? It's called Profit for a Day, and um, he does use a Profit 600 on this. That's probably something to do with the title. Here we go.
Profit for a Day, Johnny Diamonds. That was great. That was really was well, superb. No vocals in there, but um, I love Johnny's vocals. But it's and I know it, it sounds bad to say I like a song without the vocals, but I love Johnny's vocals. I like all of his songs. That's but it's got a, it's got a melodica on it with loads yeah. of reverb. So yeah, you don't it, when, when you've got a melodica with loads of reverb, you don't need any vocals. This is absolutely true. And I've, I've done a little trick, Andy. I didn't mention that that was the last song of the night. I didn't want to put everybody down because I don't want to put it on a downer just before the last song. It's like that Sunday night where you're eating your cheese and ham toasty and you know it's seven o'clock and you haven't done your homework and it's school in the morning. <laughs> I didn't want to do that to everybody. I wanted, to, I wanted to try and keep it on a high right until the last minute. So I'm sorry. It is school in the morning. You haven't done your geography homework. You're going to be in trouble with Mrs. Thomas. <laughs> Let's make that clear. So, it's now time. It's now time. We've got to say thank you to everybody. Uh, Rob Spall, thank you so much. We've had an absolute pleasure talking to you tonight about your gear, about your song, about everything. It really has been lovely. Thank you very much. It's been good fun to be on. And I have to say, I I am straight on to um, Anderton's tomorrow or (laughs) wherever. (laughs) <laughs> Juno <laughs> to see if I can get my hands on one of these brilliant synths well if only you could see the amount of kit that sat there behind Rob um, I've made a list of most of the stuff behind you there and uh, I'll, if I, if I, well you only live around the corner so if I can't buy it I'll borrow it that'll be the quickest and uh, probably or the most cost effective thing yes. to do yeah or just nick it yeah I'll be around there about half <laughs> three in the morning uh so anyway we do need to say thank you very much to everybody tonight so um first up we had let's do a quick rundown first up we have me sadly enough it was citizen fly with uh, i can't remember what, what was my song called I can't remember. It it's called, called sunburst it called. oh sunburst that was it yeah was uh, it. do you know um, we, do you know i think you carried on that miami vice theme that we were talking <laughs> about a couple of weeks ago with that video <laughs> <laughs> exactly but you were driving a ferrari i was driving a toyota Celica. that was oh. the difference in all that <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, though. I do like a to sleep. Yeah. Uh, then, running straight up from that, we have Day Julian uh, with his beautiful Milano Express. Uh, we then ran into Rob Spall, Spark One, uh, with all that amazing pieces of equipment in there, that wonderful stutter that came it's a, off. It's a through. fabulous piece of music, it's ace. It's a wonderful piece of music. And again, uh, what, what, what I'll try to do on this one um, is, on the video, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to try and put uh, start points for each of the songs. So if you want to listen back to Rob's song, I'm going to try and put a start point in the video for you so you can actually have a listen back to that and then we ran straight into gear geek corner uh possibly one of the best jingles ever produced um where we talked about the yamaha reface cs yamaha reface cs uh which is an amazing piece of gear and then we uh, ran into malayus uh with that beautiful song released ted's reunion um then we went into the master blaster uh which was silver columns um playing columns from the album yes dance thank you so much johnny lynch for letting us play that song um and then we went into torsk with their song get them and then finally we finished off with johnny diamond with what was johnny diamond's song again andy a profit for a day absolute tune was. Absolute tune, absolutely it was. What an absolute delight it's been to everybody see, see everybody again tonight. It's been a rainy old night out there, but it's, you know what, there has been some sunshine in here tonight. Andy, there's always a ray of sunshine out of your little face. Um, Rob, thank you so much indeed. Mm-hmm. And uh, Andy, it's down for you again to say the very big goodbyes. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, I'd put that at probably your, your, your seventh. It's not good. Time. That was poor, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've I think I've brought things down for you, haven't I? Yeah. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. No. Go on, have another go. Goodbye, everybody. Now that's much more like it. That's an eleven out of ten from Andy. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Andy. See you all again next time. Thank you.